Samira Wiley, this past season you've had two really significant roles in two powerful hit series, The Handmaid's Tale and Orange is the New Black. What does it mean to you to be in this position at this stage of your career to have these two hits? Oh, wow. I feel like I'm still so young uh, in terms of where I am in my career. Orange is the New Black was the first thing that I've done sort of thrust me into the public consciousness in this way that uh, I never thought Im imaginable. I never could imagine. And um, to have it twice, geez, who could think of that? I feel like the luckiest girl in the world. I feel like the luckiest girl in the world. The, uh, my castmates on my new show, Handmaid's Hill, are just all so talented. I feel uh, like they, they, they make me feel like I need to step up to the plate. <laughs> what brought you to the role of Moira? And did you have any reservations or hesitations in taking on that role? You know, I did, um, actually. Um, I uh, had just finished playing Poussey on Orange is the New Black, which um, is a character that I love playing. Um, and um, I felt like I didn't want to get typecast after that. I didn't want to play a lot of, um, I, didn't, I, I wanted to try to steer away from gay characters, um, which um, just because I want to, you know, I, I think about the actors that I admire and they don't all play the same role over time. Um, but I had a conversation with my wife, um, who Margaret Atwood is her favorite author. And um, basically she told me that that doesn't apply here. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm so happy I listened to her because what an amazing role and how stupid it would have been of me to give it up for something trivial as that. And did you ever expect this show to be become so timely? I mean, we talk about it at length with lots of different people from the show, but really by November the, the 8th, everything really changed. Yeah, everything did change um, for the whole world, <laughs> really. Um, but specifically for us on our set, you know, um, it just became um, a little more prescient. You know, it, 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 it had a little more resonance. And I think we all felt like we had uh, a bigger responsibility than even before to make sure we get this right. Um, and I, I feel really proud of all of the people involved in the creative process because I feel like um, what we did is, is really resonating with people. Yeah, and it tackles a lot of really important issues and thought-provoking themes. Are there any in particular that resonate particularly with you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, me being um, uh, a black gay woman uh, and, uh, you know, Moira obviously is as well. Um, there are things and themes in the, th in, the uh, in the project and in the book that you just can't deny um, that feel feel close to home. Um, you know, it is it is a, a crime um, punishable by 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 death, really, to be gay uh, in Gilead. And the only reason that Moira is kept alive uh, is because she has the power to reproduce. Um, and that, that's, um, that's a little too close to home almost, you know, um, I just got married. Me and my wife want to start a family, um, you know, sometime in the, in the future. And, um, to think about those, our rights being infringed upon in, in that way and being on set and having, you know, it's like, it's like, where, where did the line stop from, from reality and, 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 and fiction? Yeah, absolutely. It's really, it really has been quite um, profoundly moving for lots of us who, you know, who, who care about freedom of speech or women's rights. And there's, there's a whole bunch of things that the show tackles. Right. Um, one thing that I really, really appreciated is, and this is, this is really about your character, Moira, is that in the finale, we get to see a really interesting perspective on how refugees deal with that process and how they're treated. What did that mean to you to, to play that particular side of Moira's character? Uh, it was very informative, honestly, for me. Um, I think a lot of people, uh, who, if you haven't gone through it personally, don't really know what that looks like. Um, I was talking to uh, Bruce Miller, the creator of the show, uh, on a panel with him recently. He talked about how much the UN actually helped um, the, the the show in terms of making sure they got everything right. You know, why does she get, she gets exactly 470 Canadian dollars and like, why is that? And um, it was, it was, it was um, a, a, a real learning lesson for me. And I'm glad that I was the character that got to um, go through all of that. Um, it's, it's quite a shock to the system. Um, to have gone through whatever you've gone through just to cross some border and then all of this you're presented with all of this stuff immediately things that you 
you thought you lost. You thought you we thought we lost our rights to have money. We thought we lost our rights to have any kind of freedom and to just be handed that once you cross the border to some other country that somehow in some way values you in the way that you should be valued. Um, it's almost like, you know, Moira has to come back around to herself and say, oh, this, I am a person. I am a person again. Yeah, it was really, it was really well done. Uh, let's talk about some of the highlights from the season as well, because if you are nominated for an Emmy in a few weeks and a lot of actors, you know, they don't want to talk about that because it's, you know, whatever, but it, it's, it's certainly a possibility. You, you would have to pick your, your uh, highlight episode and there's a few of them. One of them would be episode eight, Jezebel's, where Moira and Offred catch each other's eye in that, in that hall and, and eventually reunite. It's really, really emotional. Just talk us through the filming of that particular episode, especially uh, the chemistry between you and Elizabeth Moss. Um, are you, you're talking about episode episode eight or episode ten? I'm sorry. Oh, episode eight, the the Jezebel okay. episode, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, wow, that was okay. So that's the first episode where we see Moira come back um, after after we see her leave on the train, um, and I was so excited. I remember being so excited to come in and do that episode for a number of reasons. Uh, one, I get to wear some really cool outfits. <laughs> <laughs> um, and two, honestly, like I hadn't been on set for a couple of episodes and um, being in a room again and being in a scene with Elizabeth Moss, um, Liz, I, we call her Lizzie, um, is, is just something to look forward to. She um, is a person that I've always sort of had like a talent crush on from afar because I think she's so amazing. And to finally be in a, a, a part of a, a cast with her and not only be a part of her cast, but to have all of my scenes are with her. Um, it was a sort of role reversal, I feel like that episode. Most of the season you see uh, June or Offred being um, bolstered by the memory of Moira. Uh, she, I'm sorry, just to make sure the light is, um, uh, she, I'm still here. <laughs> Phew. Okay, okay, I'm still here. All right, hi guys. Um, um, you know, and Offred ends up being the one that has to sort of kick Moira back into gear. Um, and they sort of um, switch roles in that way. And it was it was nice to be able to come back to set. And gosh, it was <laughs> nice to come back to set. And I'm just going to hold you. Uh, it was nice to be able to come back to set and, um, and, and, and work with her on that, but also sort of step into a different side of Moira, a Moira that is sort of become... Uh, a shell of, of the person that she used to be because she's been so uh, so downtrodden and, and um, by, by the system. Yeah, absolutely. And then in the finale, um, you're reunited with Moira, sorry, reunited with Luke. Um, it was such a great payoff for us to see that happen. Um, yeah. Do you have any idea where those two are headed for season two yet, or is that still completely unknown to you? That is such a good question. Um, I was, uh, I don't know. Um, I do know that there, um, I was again talking to Bruce recently and um, he was talking about all of the possible things to explore in season two. And um, I mean, you know, there's so much, we've got, we've got Moira and Luke in Canada now, so we can have like so a, a Canada part of the show. <laughs> yeah. Canadian be part it's of so show. exciting. Um, but I hope we explore not only just that, but in season one, you know, we were able to see Luke's backstory. We were able to see some of Nick's backstory and we see flashbacks of Moira, but we don't really go into her life um, uh, as an individual. We see her mainly how it relates to June and in June's home. Um, but so I'm, I'm excited to maybe see, go a little bit more into her backstory and also more into um, uh, her future with her new family of Luke and Canada. Yeah, that's something that we're all looking forward to. Let's switch up to Orange uh, before I let you go. I, I got to be really honest with you, Samira, that even just looking at you on this on this screen, I'm still thinking about Puse. I still have not totally made peace with losing her. I really haven't uh, as a fan. Have you at all? No. <laughs> no, I don't think I... <laughs> um, I mean, I, I've made peace with Samira moving on and I love what I'm doing right now. I love being in The Handmaid's Tale and being able to do parts in different projects. But that role, I mean, it, Orange is New Black really, really um, 
gave me my entire life. Uh, I grew up on that show. I became a woman on that show. I found my wife on that show. Um, but the character of Kusei is someone that lives in me and will live with me forever. Um, I miss her as if she is separate from me uh, because she is. Um, she is um, uh, her own own person that that we all really had to deal with her death because she is no longer anymore. Um, she's no longer with us anymore, excuse me. Um, I remember my mother telling me that she felt like she'd lost one of her best friends. Um, and that was, that was, that was um, hard to hear um, because it, 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 it echoed my own feelings, but it was also nice to hear because it felt like, oh, maybe I did a good job. <laughs> my yeah. mom thinks to say is a different person than I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's high praise. That's really high praise. <laughs> you know, um, we're all desperately watching season five now that it's, it's been released on Netflix, but diving back into season four, it appeared to be, and consensus seemed to be that it was a really, like it was a rebound for the series. It just was such a strong season. And a lot of that had to do with uh, with Poussey. Um, when you received the script for the episode where, you know, Poussey is being held down by the guard, it's a very, very difficult uh, scene to watch. What was your reaction? Uh, well, um, my, my wife actually wrote that episode. And um, for every episode of television that she writes, regardless of if it's, it's um, something that I'm in or not, I always get a first draft to be able to read yeah. it and give her notes. So it's something different when I need to, you know, be given the draft and get notes, but it's also my, like, death. <laughs> yeah. Um, or the character's death that I've, that I've been playing for the past four years. Um, so that was a really interesting, interesting um, way to read the script. Um, I was trying to be able to, um, well, number one, I mean, you can't deny you're sitting there reading it, which I think she did such an amazing job with the script. It was an amazing script. And uh, I remember her calling me as soon as she's, she, she FaceTimed me, as soon as she'd finished writing it. And I had no idea what was going on. I just knew her face was like flushed and so many tears and she was just sobbing. And I was like, oh my God, what's wrong? What's wrong? Like who died? And she goes, I killed her. I just killed her. And I was like, who did she kill? Like what is going on? <laughs> and then finally I like get it. And it, it, and it, we sat there and we cried on the phone together because it was, I mean, it's it, it was it was a big thing for, you know for as big as it as, as everyone feels i think we felt it even bigger yeah it's just talking about it now it's making me sad um my my oh just speaking <laughs> of wives i watched the show with my wife and she wanted me to ask you in the finale when we leave the, when we leave puse you're looking directly at the camera it's an image that is really seared on us like it gave us goosebumps and it made her cry and i'm wondering where that came from was that something that was just in the script that you played or something that you did quite often in different ways talk us through that choice because it really worked um that is a direction straight down from genji kohan um it was not i don't remember being written in the script at all um, we've never done that on the show. That's not the kind of show Orange is the New Black is. Um, and I remember being on, you know, uh, set that day and it was sort of a, like a high crane camera with the uh, skyline of New York in the background. And so in order for them to give me notes, someone would have to run down to where I was and tell me what they were saying. And so someone runs down and they're like, hey, Genji said, look in the camera right at the end. And I was like, what? No, she didn't say that. That's ridiculous. She didn't say that. And they're like, no, really, like she really wants you to do that. And so in my head, I'm saying, okay, like I'll do it once. Like obviously they're never gonna use this take. And as we all know, they did use that take. And I never could have, I mean, like sometimes someone just has the foresight to see how something is going to land when you can't see it. Um, to me at the time, looking straight into the camera sounds like an asinine thing to do. <laughs> but <laughs> but going back and seeing it, it is exactly what you said. It's powerful. And I'm just um, happy that Genji was able to see that and able to, to, to know in that moment so definitively, you need to do this. You need to look at us because we're never going to see you again. 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's it's killing me. Um, you know, Orange keeps winning those SAG Ensemble Awards. It just it's just like it's there and it wins, and it's obviously because the cast is so strong. But what does it mean to you as an actor on your as, as an individual and as a group to win that really important high profile award? You know, I think acting in its essence is it's a collaborative sport. You know, uh, you're only as good as the people that you're on screen with. Um, and, you know, it, unless you're Tom Hanks and Castaway, no one's going to sit there and watch a whole thing of just one person. You know, it really comes. And even he needed a volleyball, you know, so yeah. you need people to to act off of. And, 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 and what we do, um, me and my castmates, what we create together is something that could never be done by one person alone. Uh, and so to, to win it with all the women that I've met and, 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 and have grown to be sisters with over the past years, that means so much. And then individually, as, as you know, just, just um, a, a singular actor, I, you look up to this like SAG as this thing from when you're really young that like one day I'm gonna get my SAG card. One day I'm gonna be a part of this union this union that includes Meryl Streep, it includes Tom Hanks, Denzel, all the amazing actors we think of, all of them are in SAG and all of them are the ones that actually get to vote for who wins these awards. So we're winning awards that are voted on by our peers and by our, our colleagues and by people who we admire. And that to me, honestly, I think the SAG awards are my favorite because of who votes for them. Yeah, they're pretty special. Look, speaking of awards, I really hope that we get to see you at the Emmys. You really deserve it. And we really thank you for your time and good luck uh, for season two of Handmaid's Tale. Thank you, Rob. All right. We're all